All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. If I can ask you all to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, and I apologize uh, for the tardiness, but uh, we're here, and also we're in our chief gear tonight as we recognize our fall athletes. Um, Mr. Baldinger, unfortunately, couldn't be here today. He's uh, away with his family, and um, I also want to recognize um, our new uh, interim business official, Richard Cunningham. We thank you, and thank you for joining us. Um, And like I said, these are, these are our favorite days when we get to recognize uh, all the hard work of our athletes, our coaches, um, and our athletic director. And uh, we thank you, another winning season. Uh, congratulations to you all on behalf of the board. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Brennan so we can start our ceremony. Thank you. I just wanna share a couple remarks first. I'd like to say good evening and welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting where we honor and celebrate our fall athletic teams who have achieved Nassau County and Long Island championship status. Congratulations. <laughs> to all of our athletes, I commend you for your success. Your accomplishments which we celebrate tonight are no doubt the result of your hard work and your dedication to your sport and each other. This fall, it has been my honor to watch you compete at such high levels. You know, there's a difference between being good and being great. Good involves talent, which all of you have displayed. But to be great and achieve success like you have is special. I'd just like to quote who I think is the GOAT of basketball, Michael Jordan. That's sometimes an argument with this generation, but to me, the GOAT is Michael Jordan. Um, he said that talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championships. Together, you've all achieved this greatness. You've done this not only through your hard work, but you've been a part of a remarkable support system here in Massapequa, supported by many people. Tonight, and at every opportunity in the future, please be sure to give your heartfelt thanks to your coaches and especially your parents. I just want to ask you to give them a round of applause right now. <laughs> to our coaches, I want to thank you for your time, your energy, and the love that you put into your sport and athletes. You have set the conditions for success. I have personally watched you pour your heart and soul into all that you do, and it's nothing short of inspiring. My college coach back in the day used to say to me right before a race, just let it go, just let it go. You coaches, you've prepared your athletes, you've put your trust in their performance, and they have soared. To the parents, you are your children's chief cheerleaders and their biggest supporters from the very start. From cheering in the stands to the send-offs, it was quite impressive. Massapequa parents bring a very special type of energy. Love it. Like your children, you bring an attitude of winning and success, and this didn't just start in high school. You've been sowing those seeds for a very long time, and we thank you for entrusting us. Athletes, as your superintendent, I have watched you laugh together I have watched you celebrate together, and I've also watched you cry together. It's one of those things that I happen to love about sports and about teamwork. You can't hide the emotions. You don't know when they're gonna come, but you'll never forget this. They always come out. You've made and you will continue to make memories that will last a lifetime. And yes, you're gonna remember the championship celebrations, but what I encourage you to do is to tune into the memories and the journey, how you played as a team, how you had the courage to take risks and try things that you never thought were possible. I'm just going to wrap up by sharing with you, yesterday I met with a gentleman who was a class of 1967 from Massapequa High School. He still wears his chief apparel with pride. We've had this incredible conversation. 
We spoke about 90 minutes, and he shared with me a quote from General MacArthur that I believe captures the essence of what you're experiencing here as a student athlete in Massapequa schools. It goes like this. On the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds that on other days and on other fields will bear the fruits of victory. You have been successful on the fields. You've been successful on the courts. But your Massapequa education and experience will serve you forever. I want to thank you for representing Massapequa so well. Good luck to you, and I look forward to continued success in the rest of your seasons. And at this point, I'd like to turn over to Ms. McEntee, who will handle the remainder of tonight's presentation. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to uh, take this moment to just thank the uh, Central Administration team, the Board of Education, for inviting us here tonight to celebrate and honor our fall 2022 championship teams and Coach Degnan, who recently received Hall of Fame honors um, at the uh, New York State uh, Armory. Before introducing the four championship teams and the one coach being honored, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge and congratulate all of our fall teams for their impressive accomplishments this season, which included every fall varsity team being named a NISPA Scholar Athlete Team that speaks to the importance Dr. Brennan was just talking about. This is an incredible achievement which speaks volumes to your character, dedication, and commitment to both your academic and athletic excellence. Additionally, I'd like to congratulate Cameron Gilda and Andre Podskurbin, sorry, I apologize for mispronouncing that, who uh, represented Massapequa at the fall cross-country state championship tournament this fall, and also Leonard Lee, who was selected as Newsday Scholar Athlete recipient for the fall season. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our fall championship teams. I'd like to welcome to the podium coaches uh, Ortega, McGinnis, and Scott, who will be presenting the girls field hockey team, who were named Nassau County champions. Good evening. So as a team, we have had many occasions to celebrate the varsity field hockey Nassau County Class A championship win, but it's an honor to be recognized and celebrated by our Board of Education and all of you tonight. We'd like to take the opportunity to congratulate the other fall sports teams here tonight on their championship wins this season. Go Chiefs. Being a championship team takes a lot more than a good win and loss record. We know that. Like uh, Mac Ms. McEntee just said we were named a scholar athlete team in all of New York State Public High School, which is an amazing accomplishment. These girls on and off the field work so hard, and that really showed in their academics. We also, um, throughout our season, had a day where there were nearly 100 field hockey players on one single field from grades 7 through 12. This varsity team helped coach and lead drills and officiate scrimmages for the girls just passing on the game, giving back to their community, which was an amazing day. Uh, they're all wearing pink sweatshirts tonight, which on their own, speaking to them as a team, they decided to order um, and really to represent the breast cancer awareness that we wanted to bring throughout the month of October. That month, we raised $1,650 in coordination with the JV team, thanks to Coach Scott, and we donated that to the Suzanne M. Scanio Foundation, which um, impacts everyone here in Massapequa, which was an amazing thing that we were able to do as well. We also, with um, two of the girls on the team who are ambassadors, had the first ever Morgan's Message game um, that raises awareness for mental health in athletes. We dedicated a game to that and um, continued to wear our teal ribbons throughout the season in that honor. So that was an an another amazing thing that these varsity field hockey players did. So on behalf of myself, my coaching staff, my student athletes, I do want to thank Ms. McEntee and Mr. Rath for all their support starting in the off season. They've truly done so much to get us the field space, the equipment, everything we need to compete at the highest level in Nassau County. We'd like to thank Dr. Brennan and Ms. Lowell for their support this season. We really appreciate their presence during our senior game, our Nassau County championship win, during our Long Island game. What you've done for us is sincerely appreciated and it's really helped our program get us as far as we have. Thank you. To my coaching staff, Coach McGinnis, Coach Scott, Coach Morabs, thank you for your dedication and truly making every season the best experience for these student athletes. And the best for last, my team. Congratulations to all of you on earning the Nassau County Championship. 
We ended the season seated first in playoffs, had a big 6-0 win in the semifinals, a big 5-1 win in the championship game, and that win was clearly yours. You earned the program back-to-back -back county championships. Um, I do want to mention our final game of the season, although the outcome wasn't a win in the Long Island Championship. It was clear to everyone on the chief sideline how amazing you ladies played, and I couldn't be more proud of you all. Um, and that's really what we hope for as coaches, that you grow throughout the season at, as young women. So congratulations. Good luck to our 11 seniors as they finish the final half of their high school careers. To all our returning players, we look forward to next season and continue to build the success of Massapequa Field Hockey. All right, so tonight's roster, uh, she couldn't be here tonight, but Neve Bowman. Next up, Nicolette Buffalina. Come on up. <laughs> Olivia Capobianco. Kate Charlo, who couldn't be here tonight. Colleen Emanuel, who just made it from her basketball game. <laughs> Kirsten Farrell. Samantha Fung. Allison Gonzalez. Bella Gorgon. Aliyah Hassett. Maya Hassett. Taylor Komar. Angela Langone. Ellie Leeson. Dylan Lesney, Tess Menino, Caitlin McLenahan, Cassidy Morrow, Lauren O'Connor, Catherine O'Connell, Katie O'Gorick, Ava Paracakis, Eden Price, Reagan Taylor, Emma Theodorus, Madison Tuchelski, and Dakota White. At this time, I'd like to welcome up the girls' soccer coaches, Coach Stegner, Foreman, Puglisi, and Cummings, who will be presenting the girls' soccer team who were named Nassau County champions. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thank you um, to our athletes, to our parents, um, administration, 
uh, for all the effort, dedication, and the continued support uh, for our athletes here at Massapequa. Uh, year in, year out, it's amazing to see um, how many teams you know, make the playoffs, uh, win championships, move on. Um, congratulations to volleyball teams. Guys going upstate is phenomenal. Great job, field hockey, Nassau County champions. Uh, really, really spectacular. Um, so this year, uh, <clears throat> we had an extremely young team, which is, which is odd for us. We, we tend to have a lot of older uh, players, um, but this young team went on to win 16 games, uh, only losing twice. Those two losses uh, ended up being the two teams that competed for the state championship, uh, which is pretty, pretty spectacular. Um, we went undefeated in Nassau County, going 12-0. Uh, and this pre program um, really speaks about how much it is more than just the game uh, that, that we all love and why we come out and play. Um, we think about the connections, the family, uh, and the support that we give each other. Um, I, I think Dominique Diorio, one of our senior leaders, okay, love it, um, said it best when she was quoted in Newsday. Um, and she said, you have to protect the Massapequa name. You have to work as hard as you can for it, and that's what we do every single game. Uh, and that's something that this team... And that's something that this team absolutely did. Um, I think that quote should be plastered up on the walls in the locker room. Uh, so I got a little sign for you guys. Um, and again, this quote uh, epitomizes the mentality of this program. Um, it's more than just an individual team. It's about the program and, and what we've been able to do over these years. Uh, so congratulations again, ladies, on a great season um, and a county championship. Uh, so first up, Riley Benito. <laughs> Shay Brennan. Dominique Diorio, Nina Domingo, Jessica Fackler, Megan Felker, Mackenzie Ferrara, Lena Fleischer, Amy Flores, Emma Gagliano, Kara Jostoffer, Holly Krieg, Maddie Lyon, Kaya Mueller, Mia Napolitano, Michaela Napolitano, Brianna Neary, one of our captains, Juliana Peterson, Samantha Ports, Dominica Rossi, Reese Russell, another one of our captains, couldn't be here tonight, Michaela Schneidler, Carly Schuler, Katie Stork, Megan Stork, Nicole Tonello, Olivia Trojanowski, Grace Vince, and Julia Winter. Thank you guys very much. Ladies are pros at photos. Mm -hmm.
I'd like to welcome up coaches DeSalvo, Breslin, and Enhart, who will be presenting the boys' volleyball team, who were named Long Island champions. All right. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, on behalf of the boys' volleyball program, we just want to thank the Board of Ed, uh, Dr. Brennan, Ms. Lowell, and our athletic director, Ms. McEntee, um, as well as the rest of our administration here for inviting us here tonight um, and for continued, your continued support uh, throughout our season. Also, a shout out to our Booster Club. Um, you guys literally make things happen overnight for us, and we appreciate everything you do, so definitely had to give you guys a shout out as well. Um, also, just a congratulations to all the teams and coaches here. Um, when I personally think of the fall season here at Massapequa, I think of teams who accomplish great things year in and year out. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> uh, so the boys volleyball team, we're very proud of our 2022 season. Uh, we captured another county championship. Um, and we won our first Long Island championship since 2011, going undefeated the entire way. Um, we ultimately finished third in New York State. Um, and we had an, the opportunity to compete at the highest level. Our guys worked hard all season, and we're super proud of them. This is really a special group of seniors, um, and you guys will certainly be missed, um, but we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. So if you hear your name, just please come up. Uh, Nicholas Boda. Logan Cody. Ben Cohen. Andrew Diorio. Matt Geisler, Hunter Gillis, Brian Jarski, Aiden Keevney, James McAleer, Jack Parks, Matt Pettis, Pat Radomski, Sean Reese, <laughs> James Riley, Tristan Reza, Zach Russo, Jack Schiffel, yes. Kyle Spina, Woo! Noah St. George, and Jack Stanley. Thank you, everybody. They're ready. <laughs> I'd now like to welcome up coaches Diljaco, Ahern, and Eckhart, uh, who will be presenting the girls' volleyball team, who are also named Long Island champions. On behalf of the girls' varsity volleyball team, I would like to thank the Board of Education and Central Administration for honoring our fall athletes tonight and all of their achievements this season. 
We are very appreciative of the tremendous support we receive on a daily basis from Ms. McEntee, Dr. Brennan, and Ms. Lowell. Thank you to our parents and Booster Club for being a wonderful support system for our girls and the best cheering squad throughout the season. We had another outstanding season this year, going undefeated in Nassau County for the fourth year in a row, winning the Long Island Championship for a second year in a row, and competing at the New York State Championship for the second year in a row. This year was not only an impressive year on the court, but off the court, as the girls had a team GPA of 94. The girls' volleyball program also raised $11,000 for Dig Pink and the Side Out Foundation for Breast Cancer Awareness, as well as donating money to a Massapequa family that is near and dear to our hearts. As a coach, I could not have asked for a better group of girls to coach, many of whom I have known since I taught them in middle school. Thank you, ladies and parents, for another wonderful season. And now we'll announce the team. Jessica Bianco. <clears throat> Gabriella Bordy. Oh, and happy birthday, Jess. Uh, Allie Casella. Ella Kasha. Carly Elfenbein. Alyssa Fossarelli. Erin Gannon. Olivia Harris. Isabella Giuliano. Jolie Kanzler. Bridget Keevney. Sophia Marag. Elena Michaels, Emily Miller, Allie Petrullo, Shay Ringel, Aaron Stanley, and Izzy Van Ness. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Coach Rich Degnan to join me at the podium. <laughs> Coach Rich Degnan has been, has be, began his coaching career here at Massapequa in 2007 as both the winter indoor track and field head coach and the spring track and field head coach. Since 2007, Coach Degnan has coached thousands of Massapequa athletes. Under his leadership, Coach Degnan had led both, uh, has led both the teams and individual athletes to a multitude of league, conference, state, and federation championships and tournaments. On December 17, 2022, Coach Rich Degnan was inducted into the Armory Coaches Hall of Fame for his incredible impact on the sport of track and fields. He was named the NSAF National uh, Coach of the Year in 2019. Coach Degnan previously coached in Bayshore High School where he produced 29 All-State athletes and Long Island University where his team won 12 conference titles. A five-time All-American himself during his own career, Coach Degnan is also a certified official and has served as the USATF Long Island Chair since 2007. 
In 2003, Coach Degnan helped create the Armory College Prep Program, which he has since grown into a nationally recognized program mentoring high school athletes to become college students. We are incredibly proud to be honoring Coach Degnan again here tonight for his incredible accomplishments. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that guy? And also a part-time stand-up comedian. <laughs> Am I supposed to say something? If you would like to, that's... <laughs> well, all right, I'm not going to talk too long. I just want to thank everyone involved in this community. I get to coach great kids. And this school board, the school itself, give us everything we can to take our athletes as far as they can athletically. I think currently we have 26 boys on college teams. Um, it's fun coming to work every day, and I thank you all. This award's the second greatest honor I've ever gotten. The greatest honor I get is the coach here. Thank you very much, and I'll see you when I see you. We're going to do a photo down here. Yeah. <laughs> How you feeling? Two weeks on a new hip, not bad. Right. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, I have my track and field shirt on. Here for now. Sure. Thank you. Congratulations. Where do you want to go? This is good. This is good. Do you want to go? I have. Sharon and Rich, we can hold that together. If you feel like you're going to fall, you know, I'm going to show it to everybody. Yeah. Squeeze in. Chris, are you all fitting? You got enough room? I can move down. Got my track and field in there? You guys can move down? Yeah. I wore my track and field shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Would you still retake the picture? Oh, yeah, sure. I don't know if you want to let go. Whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? Okay. Okay. So you want to have it? Yeah. So you want them back up there? Sure. Okay. Is that okay? Yep. Um, Ron, can you say? Okay. Girls soccer, we just have to redo your photo. So don't go anywhere You're just yet. I'm just going to do my closing. And then when we um, dismiss if girls soccer, we're just going to meet back up on the risers, take one more photo. Okay. Uh, in closing, I'd like to say thank you to all the building and district leadership teams, the grounds and custodial teams, coaches, student athletes, parents, guardians, and the entire community for your continued support and pride in the athletic program. Thank you very much, and go Chiefs. Uh, so, do I take it back? Okay. Girls soccer, take girls soccer have to take another picture? Okay. Uh, all right, well, yeah, we'll let the other teams go, and just on behalf of the Board of Education, we just once again want to say congratulations to all of our athletes and to Coach Deggs.
All right, with that, we'll get back to our typical business uh, meeting, and we thank again all our athletes, and hope everyone has a good night, and Happy New Year. Sure. All right, uh, here we go. Minutes approval for the December 22nd meeting. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next to the treasurer's reports. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next, a personnel uh, actions. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, next, our personnel non-certificated appointments. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm going to abstain. Okay. Next, our informational items, and I turn that back over to Dr. Brennan. Okay. Thank you. Tonight I have a uh, brief. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Was it something I said? Uh, tonight I have uh, for the board a uh, brief update regarding one of our goals associated with communication. And um, in August and September, I had announced that we would be putting together uh, a communication audit, uh, an ability to assess um, from parent perspective, staff perspective, what are some of the communication channels that are working really well? Where are there opportunities for improvement? Um, but really collecting feedback uh, from the community and our staff on how we can uh, essentially enhance our communication efforts. So I want to just walk you through uh, what this process will look like and even the timeline associated with it. Uh, but, but first, what I want to be able to do is just share with you some of the tools, platforms, and strategies that we use to communicate currently. You know, as a school district, a large district, we communicate a lot of information frequently. We use a tool called Parent Communication, Parent Link Communication, <coughs> so parents receive emails frequently from time to time. It comes in the form of a text message when it's of emergency nature. Um, and uh, we continue to use that. We have uh, a website and other opportunities to share the Massapequa story, to highlight different events, emergency alerts, really important things going on, and resources. We use social media in a number of different ways to tell the Massapequa story. Uh, to get information out, including YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and even LinkedIn now. And then finally, we have some digital and paper publications involving Insight and the Massapequa Moment and the Massapequa Minute, um, which were new enhancements. But like any organization, we want to make sure that we're constantly improving, that we're soliciting feedback on what we're doing well and where there are opportunities for improvement. For improvement and I wanted to just kind of talk about what our goal and commitment is as it relates to communication you know often communication can be like the central nervous system of all that we do it's an important backbone to both pass information along to our stakeholders but also to engage them in helping us make uh, sound decisions so the four commitments that I want to share with you tonight is to keep parents informed Continue to keep them informed with school happenings, <coughs> important events, and deadlines. We know that one-way communication is critical. We continue to do that. We want to find ways to increase engagement, all right, focused on involving multiple stakeholders in the decision-making process around key things. We want to tell the exciting Massapequa story. You know, that's the branding of Massapequa. Uh, and finally, I want to put forward this idea 
that we actually simplify the manner in which we communicate around maximizing impact. I, I'm sure I don't just speak for myself, but we all probably feel overwhelmed and overloaded with information coming at us in all different ways all the time. So one of the things we want to do is understand from the perspective of parents and staff, what is it we can do to get better at simplifying communications this way you don't feel like you're drowning in it, but what you're getting is actually having an impact. So I want to take a couple moments to share with you what we like to call the bridge to figuring out how do we solicit this feedback and build a strategic plan that allows us to be more effective with our communications. So we could do this a couple ways. We could hold focus groups, we can offer surveys, and we collect information in various ways. One of the tools that I have quite a bit of experience with is a tool called Thought Exchange that really helps us to collect information from all stakeholders and then actually synthesize meaning out of that information. And we get to involve a community in a giant conversation about a particular topic. So in this case, what I'm sharing with you tonight is we might go out with a question to the community and our staff that says, what are our current communication tools and strategies that are meeting your needs and expectations? And how might we improve those? All right, so what are the things that are working well? and where are there opportunities to make improvement? We're looking for feedback on what we can do. Um, we're not going into this with an end in mind. We're going into this in a, quite, a, quite frankly, a vulnerable place to find out what are we doing well and where could we get better? We wanna hear the honest opinion. Uh, when you participate in a thought exchange, it's 100% anonymous. I'm gonna take you through the process right now. But the first step is, is uh, as a participant, you would receive a link to essentially share your thought. You might say, I like to receive information via text message, or I like to receive information via email, and you might expand on that explanation. And then what happens is you can share multiple ideas, but after you share your idea, you're then invited to participate in the starring process, if you will, the voting process on what are those ideas that you really like. So what you get is you get a crowdsourced platform where people are sharing ideas, voting on other ideas. It's kind of like when you want to find a good restaurant in a town you've never been in, you know? They upvote that restaurant based on the type of food, cost, that sort of stuff. We upvote the ideas. It creates a very uh, open, transparent, and democratized process. What I like to say, it's never the loudest person in the room, right? It's, it's how the community votes. What are the ways that look really good on how, what, what we want to see in terms of communication? So what happens is that communication that question goes out there for now a couple weeks. And that information gets synthesized and we develop themes and that's part of the discovery process. So what are you actually saying as parents and staff, what do you like? How could we grow? How could we get better with our communication efforts? And the fascinating thing about this, it's not like you just submit your results into a survey and they go behind this you know, thing that you never see. As a district, we then come back and say, look, we asked you, you told us, here's what we heard, here's what we're gonna do. And it's fantastic when it comes to building additional trust and openness and transparency. And I really think we can accelerate and make a bigger impact with this tool. I wanna to just share with you a quick little graphic that I think highlights how this works. And what, what you see here are the maroon people. These are just people who jump into a thought exchange. So they essentially get a link, they jump into the link, and then you see those little chat bubbles. Those become thoughts. And then you start to connect people to thoughts. And this process goes on for a couple weeks, more people jump in, and you start to see themes and patterns that emerge in what people are asking for. And the fascinating thing is, you can actually ask the question, well, are you responding to this as a parent? Are you responding to this as a community member? Maybe you're a community member, but you're not a parent. Are you responding to this as a staff member? All right, and it is all anonymous. You're asking these demographic questions, but they're very general. We can start to understand what the preferences are of various subgroups and start to develop a strategic plan based upon that. It's quite powerful uh, and exciting to watch. So I just wanted to introduce that to the board tonight. Um, I want to share with you just a, a quick little timeline on, on what that's going to look like for us right now. Brian, if you wouldn't mind just advancing to the next slide. The first phase here is to design and present our communication audit uh, engagement plan. We started that process in December, uh, and tonight I'm presenting it to the board. We intend to launch this uh, thought exchange conversation sometime in January. I'm
putting like late January is probably the time frame. We like to leave these things out in the open for a couple weeks, usually about two weeks. Um, and then we eventually synthesize the thought exchange, the results that come in. You know, oftentimes as school districts, we ask a question. We might hear from only a certain group of people. We might not hear from a large group of people. I will promise you, we will get participation in this process like you've never seen before. It's so easy to participate in, it's so easy to share your idea, and it's so easy to rate other ideas. And that's where the intelligence comes in with this platform. You really start to see what rises to the top. It eliminates the noise that sometimes can exist. So the synthesis process, process is really the toughest part because there's a lot of raw data. And uh, you know we work as a team to go through that. What I'd like to recommend to the board is, because with the results when they come in, um, is looking at it from, you know, what are the things that we're doing well? What are the strengths that we already have? What are the opportunities for us to grow? Where are the recommendations coming from our community, from our parents, from our teachers on how we can grow? And then what are some aspirational ideas that come out of this? We may get some great ideas that we never thought about. That's the beauty of the crowdsourcing piece. And we would then es essentially establish themes, share insights around those results. And no matter what you share, People that participated are going to see the report and the results at the very end, again, um, getting into the point of openness and transparency. So I do anticipate that February would be the month that we'd be synthesizing results, and then probably sometime in March, um, I'd be creating a report to share those results, outcomes with the community, insights, and, and essentially an action plan on what we can do to enhance what we're doing. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them. Thank you very much, Dr. Brennan. We, we, we had the opportunity to uh, engage in this thought exchange in the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, it, was, it was really fantastic. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. And, uh, and I love that idea that you know not only do you throw ideas out there, but then you rate those ideas, and the other ones come up to the top. And I think it gives you a real genuine view of what's going on. So I, I'm, I'm excited about this, and we're moving forward. and. Um, you know, I think it's a great, I think it looks like a great plan. Board members, does anyone else have anything? To questions or anything? Or comments? Great. Yeah. And needed. needed and it's definitely needed, right, yeah. exactly. It was something that was one of our first things, communication. We, we need to know. We need to know, where, what, like you said, what we're doing good and what, what we're doing well and, and what needs help and, and how people want to be commun you know, communicated. We're getting bombarded with data every day. I can't tell you how much junk email I get every day that I have to clean out of my phone or I'll say, well, my space is used up on my phone. So it's like every single day you're deleting all these emails. So, um, you know, so communication is important, but so you want to make sure that what you need gets through and you're not just, you know, with information. So thank you very much. Right. We're looking forward to it and engaging in the thought exchange. <laughs> all right. So with that, um, we'll move forward to the resolutions. And um, does anyone have any questions on the resolutions? Number four? OK. Any, that's it. All right. Here we go. Number one, resolve that the Board of Education approve the IEP recommendations as per the attached. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number two, resolve that the Board of Education approve the students listed for home instruction. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number three, resolve that the Board of Education approve the consultant contract listed below and authorizes the Board President to sign said contract. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number four, resolve that the Board of Education approves an appropriation adjustment for the 2022-23 fiscal year amounting to $193,916. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Cunningham, can you address the Sure. Resolution? Um, this is uh, the budget trans transfers for actually uh, five areas of the budget. One has to do with additional legal fees that had not originally been budgeted for an increase in insurance premiums in the area of property and cash, a combination of property and casualty, cyber liability and fuel tank uh, storage. Uh, premiums came in higher than budgeted. Uh, BOCES admin charges uh, that have increased. The, uh, the cost to cover the new middle school cheerleading team that had been approved mm -hmm. by the board previously mm -hmm. and also some cleanup uh, for uh, payroll related to summer recreation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number five, resolve that the Board of Education approve the, approve the contract with Hofstra University to provide the facility for the 2023 Massapequa High School graduation and authorizes the Board President to execute said agreement. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Number six, whereas the Massapequa Board of Education wishes to update their policies in accordance with the New York State School Boards Association's Law and Management Policies for Schools format and wishes to provide guidance and, and policy that meet the needs of the district, be it hereby resolved the Massapequa Board of Education adopts revised policy 4321 programs for students with disabilities under the IDEA and New York's Education Law Article 89. Policy 4321.1, Allocation of Space for Special Education Programs. Policy 4321.4, Impartial Hearing Officer Appointments and Compensation. Um, do I keep going with this? It's all one resolution, Barbara? This is all one resolution? I mean, it says it's all under one number, but it's in chunks. Just keep going? Okay. Resolved that the Massapequa Board of Education adopts revised, um, no, I'm sorry, resolved that the Massapequa Board of Education replaces policy 4321.5, confidentiality and access to individualized education programs, individualized education services programs, and special plans as per the attached. Resolved that the Massapequa Board of Education adopts policy 4321.7, district-wide and statewide assessment of students with disabilities, and policy 4321.8, declassification of students with disabilities as per attached. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Number seven, resolved that the Board of Education approve the consultant listed below and authorizes the Board President to execute said agreement. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any <coughs> abstentions? And we received um, correspondence from the following uh, members of the community and uh, updates from the Board of Education. Do we have updates? I know it was a crazy mm -hmm. holiday season. It was, we did. I think yeah, you just we, had you had to meet December twenty second. Right. So it's between really between then. Armory no. Coach Stags, the, the Armory, the holiday concerts. I think we covered it all. Kind of mm -hmm. covered everything. Yeah. All right. Sounds yeah. good. All right, and then with that, um, the Board of Education allows time at the conclusion of its regular meetings for comments from residents in attendance. Please note that any person wishing to speak during this time shall comply with all provisions of board policy. Although a total of 30 minutes is allowed for comments, the board president has discretion to adjust the total time. We remind you to keep your comments to three minutes and to conduct yourself in a respectful manner. Please address school matters only and refrain from addressing topics related to personnel matters or individual students. Such concerns should be discussed privately with the superintendent or administrator at an appropriate time. The board is here to listen and cannot provide immediate feedback or engage in open dialogue. Any necessary follow-up will, no will be noted and provided at a later date. And with that, I open the floor for anyone who has a comment or question. Please come up and uh, give us your name and address. Yes, still address, mm -hmm. name and address. WOP 105 Chester Avenue, Massapequa Park. I'm here tonight representing the Massapequa SEPTA Board and all of our members. With broken hearts, publicly we would like to announce that just before the holidays, our special education community lost a legend, Marie Festa. Marie worked tirelessly through the decades, yes, decades, on behalf of all our children in Massapequa, but in particular those with special needs. She was the founder of our chapter of SEPTA many, many years ago, and in fact, up until this year, was at every one of our meetings. She was always there as an ear and a resource to us parents with a head full of knowledge and a heart full of love. Once you got to know her, that is. She could also be very intimidating. And not even five foot tall, her run-ins with the educators back in the day, and board members, by the way, <laughs> are the stuff of folklore and legend. It would not be uncommon for us, trying to get other special ed parents more involved to hear from them. I would, but I'm scared of that little lady. 
Those who knew her well knew she was a big softie. In her later years, she enjoyed a nice, warm friendship with Dr. McCaw, who would a lot of times end his presentations in front of a few full SEPTA meeting audience with, any questions or comments, Mrs. Festa? Sorry, Theo. I haven't done the full research to stand by this, but I would go so far as to say that the ripple of all her work through the years somehow affects every single child who sits in a seat in our schools today. On January 18th, our January 18th SEPTA meeting will include a tribute to this wonderful woman. And in the coming months, our SEPTA board will decide with our community members and Marie's family on how we can best honor her memory in a permanent, ongoing way. Until then, we ask for prayers for Marie's family, especially her daughter, Betty Lynn, who she advocated so hard for in a different time in special ed. We'd like to say that even though we're sad because she was the heart and soul of our special education PTA, we know the best way to really pay tribute to her is continue her great work on behalf of the special ed children in our community. And in that spirit, we would like to say, rest easy, Mrs. Festa. We will take it from here. Thank you. Uh, Debbie, can we have a copy of that for the minutes? Can we have a copy of your speech? You can email it to me if you like. Okay, okay thank you. It was a beautiful, beautiful dedication to her, and I think everyone up here, you know, she was a staple here at our meetings, and um, as a former PTA uh, president myself, um, I was there to see her She at, at one of our installation dinners um, recount the stories of, of what she did and how she started SEPTA back in the 70s, and I believe she said, and, and the stories that she told were, it was just unbelievable to us that that was the condition um, for our special needs students. So um, she has done great work, and like you said, it, it touches all of our students, and, um, and we hope that we can be part of whatever celebration of her life, um, because she, she was a, a great person, and uh, she will be sorely missed by all of us here. So thank you very much, and we do pass our condolences on to her family, and uh, we're here you know, to help recognize and, and pay tribute to her, because she deserves it. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who has any comments or questions? No? Happy New Year. <laughs> Welcome back. All right. Well, with that, then I am going to make a motion to go back into executive uh, session to discuss personnel. Um, make a motion, please. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. See you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>